afternoon that things have changed. Let's face it, we used to drive in this country, we used to drive on the left of the road. Now we just drive on what's left of the road. <laughs> you guys have got some traffic here. Woo. See, I cannot wait until the Hull train actually arrives. Because I don't think it's going to stop here, but just think about it. The Hull train's going to go. It's going to cut down on traffic. Think about this. 200 kilometers an hour. 300 people per carriage. And our taxi drivers are still going, I can beat them. I've been fairly recently in Johannesburg, just down the road. That's another name that has changed, by the way. Johannesburg. People were thinking of changing Johannesburg until they realized it's already changed. Name of two great struggle heroes. Joe Slovo, Chris Harney. Joe Harney's work. Done. <laughs> So this plane took off with us on it from Cape Town International. They're going to change the, the name and, and they, they decided that uh, they had a competition in the newspaper because they couldn't decide what to call the name. So I wrote in to win a thousand rand by renaming their airport and I thought it's Cape Town, call it your Martha Airport. <laughs> people here. Just raise your guns. Phew. Cool. <laughs> I'm Afrikaans on my mom's side. So it was a kutsia. So I'm Afrikaans on my mom's side and then English on the side of my father's best friend. And <laughs> what do they call it now? Midrand. <laughs> Where a few years ago they all used to call it for good <laughs> Let's face it, if you came to this area 20 years ago and you'd gone, uh, are you Afrikaans? You would have heard, no. Oh, <laughs> And some of the men had deep voices as well. And eventually he looks at my passport and I said, what's up? He said, oh no, uh, you South Africans, uh, there are so many of you coming here that we have a South African immigration situation. That's when I said, that's the Afrikaans part of me comes out and I said, Mania, that is not even, sorry, I said, that are not immigration. <laughs> I said, it are 107 years after the Boer War, this time we've invaded you. <laughs> so I suggest that we do this when they go, what about the crime? That what we do is we say, repeat after me, crime is a rumor that we in Gauteng made out to keep Cape Townians scared and out of our city. <laughs> we would win if she, my wife, if she was defender for my father, my father, we would win. Because I haven't scored for all months. <laughs> and by the way, if you want like very, very conservative corporate jokes, then give me a yes. If however you want naughty, naughty. <laughs> if you want borderline perversion sexual <laughs> then my cell number is 084 <laughs> when, uh, this is because I told you I'm half of a concert and when I proposed and uh, my wife said that she would marry me she said I will marry you but I want to get married in a in a beautiful African setting. I want to get married somewhere in the, in, on a game farm in a pool. Yes. No, it's great. And, <laughs> and when she said that, I said, yes, Bucky. Sure, Bucky. Okay. And she said that I want to live in the northern suburbs of Johannesburg. And I said, yeah, Bucky. And she said, and then, and then uh, once a year we must go overseas. And I said, yo, yeah, okay. Because <laughs> I always call her Boki when I'm thinking of shooting her with a hunting rifle. <laughs> but I don't know if you guys, I don't know if it's the same, because I'm a bit of an old topic. When we got to grade eight, we had to choose subjects. And, and what always happened was, like, uh, the, the boys in my school chose between woodwork and metalwork. I told you, Google's Woodwork, metalwork. 
And the girls chose between accountancy and home economics. And us stupid South African boys, we went home economics. <laughs> they're, learning, they're learning how to cook food for us. <laughs> They were learning the economics of taking your home. <laughs> I was telling you a while ago, you may remember, I was in Santa. Stopped at Santa, stopped at the robot, and the guys come and sell you stuff. And they're the coolest people in the world because they, they don't sell you anything. And they don't even have to talk to you. That's how good their sales pitch is. Because they don't, I mean, you guys, you do the sales thing on the call center? You have to use words. They don't even use words. They just come at me. <laughs> I rolled out the window and the guy said, I said, Broom, you're having 11 languages. I don't speak budget. Talk to me. 